My name is Elmarie Marines. I'm archaeologist and museum lecturer at the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo. With me today, I have my good colleague and collection manager, archaeologist and PhD, Hanne Louise Onesta. She has invited us up uh, to the museum storage, which is placed just outside Oslo city center. Here we have a state-of-the-art storage rooms for the collection. And Hanna will tell us everything about the challenges and the techniques of taking care of the archaeological items for future research and display. And Hanna, this room certainly looks like a safe place. What kind of items do you keep inside here? Thank you, Elmaria. Uh, welcome to the, to the storage facilities. Uh, in this building, we have approximately 2.3 million archaeological objects. And they demand different uh, climates, different humidity uh, to be taken care of. So today we're going to look at some of the objects uh, from the Viking Age and look at some of the rooms and some of the measures that we take to keep them safe and, uh, and uh, to be able to show them to future generations. So uh, this is a room full of boxes and uh, it looks, maybe it looks a bit boring, it's all these grey boxes, but actually this is one of the most exciting rooms in the, in the museum storage, uh, I think at least. And all the objects in this room are from the Osberg ship burial. Uh, it is a really safe and stable room uh, that, that take good care of the objects. And uh, El Maria, do you want to help me to look at one of the objects? So this is an example of uh, the objects that are in this storage room. This is actually a bedpost. And this is a uh, uh, a luxurious, it was a luxurious bedpost with animal head and probably uh, the women from um, that was found in the burial uh, was laid to rest in a bed like this. Um, it has uh, an animal head uh, that are partly destroyed and these beautiful carvings that are quite typical for the Viking Age uh, or the Osberg ship burial. The, reasons why, uh, the reason why these uh, objects are so fragile is because they were treated with uh, a chemical called alun. It's, is, it's actually a salt that was used to prevent the destruction of the tree uh, over 100 years ago. Uh, but now we know that alun is actually uh, breaking down the tree uh, and the structure in the tree uh, or and have been done that the, the last hundred years. So the museum has a large research project that's uh, working on reversing and uh, stabilizing all the objects in this room. And hopefully we will be able to show some more of these objects uh, in the new museum. And uh, we actually, we have a treat for you. And this is a really special object. So if you want to follow me over here. Ormen uh, sode, it says. It means, uh, it's a Norwegian term for uh, the head of the serpent. And uh, I will take off the lid. This is really an icon for the Norwegian Viking Age and uh, for the maybe also international. So last Monday, uh, Jan Bill showed you the Osberg ship with, uh, with the snake heads at the stem posts. Uh, but actually the ones on the ship uh, are not original because they were in really bad shape when it was found. So here is the original uh, snake head 
that were attached to the Ulfberg ship. Uh, it cannot be on display as at the museum right now because it's so fragile, but hopefully uh, in when we open the new museum at Big Day with the Viking ship and the Viking collection, we want to show the audience this amazing uh, original uh, serpent's head from the ship together with the ship. And the Vikings really loved animals and we see them on jewelry, on weapons and on the boats and on the beds, uh, li really everywhere. And they had uh, both a religious and a more ontological or, uh, or a deeper symbolic and concrete uh, meaning for the Vikings. And they even named the ships the, the sea serpent or the sea dragon. So uh, it was a part of a power display when the, uh, the Scandinavian sea fairies uh, went over the sea to the British Isle or to the continent and they came on this sea serpents. Um, but it is cold here. Do you want to go somewhere else? Yeah. Uh, but first, we're going to go a place that is even colder than this. Many doors, many keys. So here we are in uh, the special storage room for textiles and uh, in this room uh, there is approximately 10 uh, degrees Celsius. It's a bit cold to work in actually but it is really important for the textile material. All these drawers has textiles from uh, the Osberg Gray and uh, I think next Monday you will see more of these uh, textiles. So the reason for the low temperature in this room is because uh, not to keep our head cool, but because uh, it prevents the grey silverfish especially, but also other bugs, from uh, laying eggs. And the eggs, the, the grey silverfish eats uh, textiles and eats everything really. So it's a big uh, problem for museums and archives all over the world. So the low temperature in this uh, storage is just one of several measures that we uh, make to, to control and to try to prevent the destruction of the archaeological object, objects. So in, in the storage that we keep metals, we have low humidity, uh, we have very stable buildings, uh, we, have, um, we control the lightning, in the in the rooms, especially with the textiles, uh, lightning is very bad for uh, for objects. And uh, in all the storage rooms, we have low oxygen, and that uh, low oxygen oxygen uh, prevents uh, fire. So uh, we have around 15.2 percent of oxygen inside uh, all of the uh, storage rooms. So welcome to our lab. Uh, here I have prepared some objects that I wanted to show you. This is kind of a typical objects uh, that we have quite a few of in the in the storage room. And uh, uh, 
the Viking Age is special in many ways, but one of the very special things about the Viking Age is that it we have a lot of graves. So the objects from the graves we can roughly separate into two categories, uh, weapons and jewelry, and then some uh, more working tools uh, that also uh, we have a lot of. And I have uh, taken out some, some of both categories, uh, and uh, some objects that I really want to show you. And I will start with the pearls, and, uh, and the fun thing about the pearls in the Vikings in the Viking Age material uh, or the archaeological uh, material from the Viking Age is that it has colors and uh, the Vikings loved colors but we don't usually see a lot of it because the, the um, organic materials are very destroyed and it all turns out gray or brown but the pearls are really striking colors and we know that uh, the Vikings painted a lot and they had these really colorful clothes but the only colors from the Viking Age that we have are in the pearls. They're be very beautiful I think and it, uh, they come from around uh, the world actually. Some from Asia, some from, uh, from Europe. Uh, we produced pearls in Norway in the Viking Age but uh, they were tended to be very small pearls, so most of the pearls uh, are imported. It also tells about the kind of nearly global economy of uh, exchange with objects and uh, going from south to north and north to south. The pearls are very exciting. Uh, together with the pearls, uh, we usually find these brooches and these are what we call oval brooches they are very typical of uh, of the female uh, um, dress of the Viking Age this is a very uh, very early Viking Age example they have a thin shell but out during the Viking Age they tend to be larger and nearly baroque in its style golden big brooches and uh, the Viking Age women at least the some what we today would call the middle class women uh, had two of these brooches that uh, that fastened the strap of the dress and uh, we found uh, find of course these brooches in Scandinavia but we also find them in uh, Scandinavian uh, enclaves in uh, Russia Ukraine uh, we found them in France, in female graves in France and in uh, on the British Isles. So this was a kind of a typical Scandinavian female fashion statement in this period. And as part of the personal equipment, uh, we have a comb from the Viking Age. It's made of uh, reindeer antler and we actually have a lot of combs, uh, both from the Viking Age and the period before, the Iron Age, early Iron Age. Uh, and some sources uh, that describes Vikings, uh, some written sources in uh, in England and France, describe the Vikings as uh, dirty heathens and uh, violent persons, um, like uh, bullies. Uh, but uh, we also have some sources that actually talk about the Viking as very well groomed, and actually so well groomed that they uh, they charmed the ladies uh, in England so it was a problem uh, kind of a problem that the, the foreign people came and took took away the ladies and uh, it makes sense because we find a lot of combs and we find tweezers and other equipment that are uh, made to you know groom uh, and uh, scissors so they cut their hair and and uh, comb their beard and uh, yeah and um, one other as I mentioned one other category of objects that we have a lot of from graves are the weapons and I am especially fond of swords so I thought I would show you a couple of swords that we have but when I 
touch the sword, I have to have the gloves on. Because uh, on the fingertips we have some fat uh, in the skin. And the fat has some salt in it and it uh, is not good for, uh, for the iron. It breaks down the iron. So I have to take on this gloves. So it's different kind of weapons in the, um, in the graves, but the most usual are spears, uh, axes, and swords. And from the medieval, a bit later uh, written sources, we know that uh, these weapons were uh, kind of a basic equipment for the free men, that they uh, were merely made to, to have them and to, uh, to maintain the weapons so they were ready for uh, action. So this is a sword, it's quite typical. Uh, it's a uh, 10th century sword, you can see that from the hilt, and it's very fragile so we have to take care when we lift it. And you see that it is, it is bent, and it was probably bent before it was laid in the grave. And that is something that I find really exciting because the the bending and the destruction of many of the Viking swords uh, in uh, in uh, cremation graves are really a part of a uh, ritual, a death ritual. So we, as archaeologists, we just find the the, the um, material in the earth, but here we can see some uh, some physical expression of uh, probably quite violent ritual that followed the, the funeral. So as Jan uh, showed you last week, we have uh, three Viking ships. And uh, earlier today, I showed you some wood from the Osberg uh, burial that were alone conserved. But here we have a couple of objects from the Goksta ship, which was the warship that uh, Jan showed. And uh, in the Goksta ship, it was filled with Astrid Osberg, it was filled with uh, objects of mainly household uh, objects, but also some weapons. So this is a bucket from uh, the Goksta ship. And as you see, it's extremely well preserved. And uh, uh, that is because uh, it was um, kind of sealed in a, in a very stable environment with no oxygen. So that's why the, the wood has uh, been preserved. So you see the, the carvings, uh, quite simple, but really effective carvings at the bottom of the, the bucket and uh, the way it was constructed. This is actually a formal bucket that we find throughout the, the 19th century in Norway kind of a simple bucket made of wood. So the second object that I want to uh, show you from uh, the Goksta is uh, one that many people traditionally are interested in when they come to the museum. That is a shield. And as you see, the wood here are also very well preserved, but actually uh, this is a combination of different shields, but because when the Goksta ship was found, uh, it was broken down, so they had to put together and reconstruct some of the shields. But we have boxes on boxes with shield parts from Goksta, so this is a reconstruction. Uh, the shield boss, that is what we usually find in graves, so we know that the shield was an uh, integrated part of the warrior equipment together with the more uh, offensive weapons uh, but usually we don't have any wood left so this is uh, this is how a viking shield would look like so here in the lab uh, the museum has uh, conservators working on the objects and uh, in the storage rooms i talked about uh, the, the kind of passive, the optimal um, 
preservation uh, milieus, uh, the climate that we do to preserve the objects, but sometimes some objects are uh, are in pro uh, chemical processes that uh, that breaks them down. So then they have to go in here to the conservators and they work on the objects to stop these processes. So here people work on uh, a really chemist, really advanced chemist working against time. So welcome to our largest storage room at the museum. So here we have all the objects that doesn't fit any other place. Uh, and what I want to show you here today is uh, something that we're very proud of. That is the staved church portals from the early medieval period. And the reason why I want to show you this is because actually this is um, kind of continuation of the rich uh, culture of uh, wood carvings that we see in the Viking Age. But from the Viking Age, we, doesn't, we don't have any preserved buildings, so the state churches are really the oldest uh, standing building in Norway. And uh, the state churches were built from the 10th to the 13th, 14th century. They were built and rebuilt up to uh, modern time. Uh, and if you see the state church portals, they were placed on both sides of the door, so you entered the church. Uh, and they have rich carvings both of plants and animals. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the animals were really important in the Viking Age too, and in a different way than in the medieval Christian context. Uh, so based on what we know of the animal carvings in the Viking Age, we might uh, be able to see uh, in our inner eye the, the long houses from the Viking Age with this rich uh, wood carving portals. So some of the changes we see from the uh, Viking Age uh, wood carvings and uh, animal ornaments to the medieval uh, animal or uh, the wood carvings in the medieval uh, period is that we get these plant motifs and that's really an import from the continent uh, and the Christian Europe. So they influence not only uh, the religious, uh, uh, the religion of Scandinavia and Norway, but they also influenced the art uh, and the, the material culture that people used. But uh, both the Viking and the medieval wood carvings also are examples of uh, societies that were mostly illiterate. Uh, they told stories in pictures. They told stories with symbols, with uh, with uh, with the animals, with the plants uh, in in Christian Europe, the the lamb was Christ, uh, the snake was Satan. This was not the case in the Viking Age. In the Viking Age, the snake was uh, uh, probably Mithgar's ormen uh, that uh, held the earth together. But there is so there is some. Um, um changes, but there's also a continuation uh, that people used uh, ornaments and used the material culture and their surroundings to telling stories that gave meanings. 